Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Philip Spies. Philip earned his bachelor's degree at LMU in Munich, where he did his bachelor's thesis in the Knochel Group. He subsequently worked in the Martin Group at ICIQ, where he did his master's thesis, before coming to the University of Vienna, where he's currently pursuing his PhD in the Malita Group. And with that, I'll let you get started, Philip. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you, Matt, for this kind introduction and the invitation to present some of the recent studies of the Molito Group in the Synthesis Workshop. Today, I would like to present a new and direct synthetic pathway for enamides enabled by electrophilic activation of amides. Enamides are a subgroup of enamines and differ from enamines by their attachment to an electron withdrawing group, which can be a carbonyl, an ester, or a sulfonyl group. While tampering the nitrogen center with an electron withdrawing group, Enamides are less reactive than enamines and in contrast to enamines, very stable molecules that are not any more prone to hydrolysis and consequently easy to handle in the laboratory. These features of enamides have resulted in an increased interest in the past decades. Despite the reduced reactivity, the chemistry of enamides is still very diverse, covering cycloadditions, electrocyclizations, rearrangements, CC couplings, nucleophilic and electrophilic addition reactions. But overall, it can be said that enamides react more akin to olefins. Enamides are also present in various natural products and drug candidates. One important example that I wanted to highlight is the natural product salicyl halamide A, which is a potent anti-cancer agent. During studies for the preparation of new hydrogenated analogs of this natural product with structure one and two, the key role of the enamide moiety for the biological activity was demonstrated by comparing IC50 values. Whereas the biological activity of analog 1 remained almost unchanged, the activity was severely reduced for the hydrogenated derivative 2. Various methods are known to make enamides. To name a few, and one of the most important ones, carbon-nitrogen couplings, an acylation, and isomerization of allylic amides. But to a large extent, the preparation methods require highly prefunctionalized study materials, which makes the synthetic preparation of enamides difficult. Given the importance of enamides as versatile synthetic building block in synthesis and in the presence of natural products, a far more simple and direct way to excess enamides would be the end hydrogenation of the corresponding amide. Few methods have been developed in the past, which I quickly want to highlight. Two iodobenz amides have been reported to produce enamides in a hydrogen atom transfer event upon treatment with either palladium in light or ruthenium in heat. Even though in general high yields were obtained, the limitation of using precious metals and pre-functionalized benz amides remained. Shono et al. have reported an electrochemical protocol that oxidized the amide to hemiaminal methyl ether. In a second step, that required heating and slightly acidic conditions, these hemiaminals formed the desired enamides. However, in certain cases, overoxidation was observed and the method was mainly limited to cyclic amides. Lastly, I want to mention a photochemical report from 1981, which showed for a single example the end dehydrogenation of amides by treatment with titanium dioxide and copper sulfate. Overall, it appeared to us that the development of a novel single-step N-dehydrogenation method that can accommodate N-cyclic and N-acyclic amides was in high demand. With our group's experience in the area of AM activation, we hypothesized that a triflic anhydride activated amide might offer a new pathway for N-dehydrogenation method. We speculated that the generated intermediate one should show enhanced acidity of the proton alpha to the nitrogen and that a strong non-nucleophilic base would allow the desaturation. Not only would this be a new method for the toolbox of making enamides, it would also extend the landscape of AIM activation, where the functionalization of the nitrogen site remained almost unexplored. After extensive optimization, we were pleased to discover that lithium HMDS and triflic anhydride gave a high-yielding reaction. In the order with adding the base first, followed by triflic anhydride at minus 94 degrees in diethyl ether, amide 1 got N-dehydrogenated within 30 minutes to give the desired product an excellent yield. 
other bases such as 2-iodoperidine or LDA gave no desired enamide or only in poor yields. It turned out that the countercation plays a key role. Sodium HMDS and potassium HMDS gave only unsatisfactory results. The low temperature was also crucial to a lower high yielding reaction, but at minus 78 degrees the process was still very effective. Lastly, the addition proved essential for higher yields and a better reproducibility. With suitable reaction conditions in hand, we started to study the scope of the nitrogen part of the amide. Various ring sizes from 5 to 7 membered rings were all well tolerated. Upscaling for 2A allowed to provide the enamide and gram scale. Heterocyclic enamides were also readily prepared, even though for 2F and 2G in slightly lower yield, which was due to a sluggish conversion. In those cases, the starting material was easily back recovered. Importantly, acyclic substrates, which are scarcely reported in other antihydrogenation methods, provided the corresponding enamides with exclusive formation of the E enamides. Non-symmetric amides showed a marked preference for the formation of the less encumbered substituent site. Even in the example 2P, a preference with a factor 1.7 was observed for the ethyl substituent over the butyl substituent. Lastly, drug derivatives of peroxetin, an antidepressant, and norlodinosine, a dopamine metaboloid, were antihydrogenated, albeit in modest yields. Next, we moved our interest to the carbonate portion of the amide. Other spherical hindered enamides were obtained in good yields. Important then was the testing of unsubstituted benzamides, which also delivered the desired product, but in slightly lower yields. Based on these observations, we became interested in studying the influence of electron-rich and electron-neutral substituents for various positions on the iron ring, whereas the methyl group gave a high yield in the auto position in comparison to the para, the methoxy group showed a different behavior. In this case, para and metal substitution was advantageous. We speculated that the in situ formed aluminium triflate generated from the activation of the amide with triflic anhydride could be attacked on the sulfur center as a parasitic pathway leading back to the starting material. Lithium coordinating groups such as a methoxy group would hereby support the undesired site reaction, whereas a methyl group would have a shielding effect and therefore prevent this process. With this knowledge in mind, we tested other electron-rich substrates, but also tested various functional groups. We were pleased to find halides, thioether, vinyl, nitrile substituents were all well tolerated. Lastly, ferrazine and a conjugate of vanillic acid and febuxostat were tested, which provided the antihydrogenated products in reasonable yields. Unfortunately, in the case of electron-rich heteroaromatics such as thiophene and furan, we observed no conversion. The same behavior was found for non-benzamide substrates such as alkyl amides. With our enamide products in hand, we performed several further functionalization reactions to show the usability of our building blocks. Inverse electron demand yields either reactions or even a 2 plus 2 cycle addition with an aron worked smoothly. In addition, under acidic treatment of an electron, a rich arene, a Nazarov type cyclization was successful. Treating the enamide under oxidative fluorinating conditions resulted in ring deconstruction and allowed access to a fluorinated acyclic secondary amide. Another deconstruction was taking place in the reaction of the enamide with hydrazine using slightly acidic conditions being a Fischer and Dole type reaction. Lastly, we were able to show the possibility of a better functionalization of the enamide using copper catalysis and a hypervalent iodine reagent. Lastly, we moved our interest to study the reaction mechanism in more depth. Kicking off with an 18O labeled substrate, we discovered no loss of the 18O incorporation in the final enamide product. Next, we wanted to investigate the deuterium labeled substrate with substrate 6C and 6F. Kinetic isotope effects of 4.7 and 34 have been observed. Both results strongly suggest that the abstraction of the N-alpha hydrogen is involved in the rate determining step of the transformation. Moreover, the latter, which shows an unusually high isotope effect, suggests that quantum tunneling effects have to come into play. Tunneling effects are well known to gain influence at lower temperature 
and when using highly sterically hindered bases. To prove our hypothesis, we repeated the androhydrogenation of 6F at now minus 41 degrees and then observed the kinetic isotope effect of 13. While analyzing closer the root mixture of our molar substrate, we were able to identify by 19F NMR the reduced sulfur in the form of the tiflinate, but also incorporation into an amide confirmed by HRMS. Lastly, a simple deuteration experiment of 1A excluded the possibility of a methylation event. Based on these mechanistic studies, we postulate a mechanism that starts with the activation of the amide with triflicon hydride, which forms the minimum triflate. Compound 9 is now decisively acidified in the N alpha hydrogen position, and lithium HMDS is able to act as a base while releasing triflinate. Subsequently, a rapid second deprotonation is taking place, which forms the final enamide. Lastly, I would like to thank Professor Nuno Malidi for giving me the opportunity to undertake PhD studies in his amazing group and his continued support. Most especially, I would like to thank my collaborators Martin Berger and Daniel Kaiser for their great contributions and support during the project. If you have any question about this work, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Philip for a great talk. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.